everyone i'm back with my next video so in this one i wanted to show you all the loose paper originals that i have collected over the years the vast majority of the of them are done in ink which has been and probably still is one of my favorite mediums to use and i think a large portion of it is going to be somehow inktober related because i guess that's when i had like my bursts of uh inspiration or hard work or something but a lot of these date um, quite a few years back to when i was still at sheridan college for animation and i'm just gonna start with those and go chronologically from the oldest to the most recent ones uh yeah so this pile right here is from when i was studying traditional animation at sheridan college if any of you guys have heard of it it's in oakville ontario and it, i think it's one of canada's most well-known animation schools or something like that but i'm not here to talk about that so moving on i don't really know where to start i think these were for inktober now which year i have no idea but i'm just gonna start talking about what these are of so this is a little painting of a scene with my character in it her name is pals in this one, I was just trying to experiment with drawing something quick. As you can see, I only filled out the two squares out of the three that I was planning to. At this point, it's been so long ago that I have no idea what was going on in my head, but I really, really like the cozy atmosphere that I was able to get out of this one. Mm, I don't think I'm going to talk too much about the story. So I think because I, I do want to come back to it more seriously. So at the risk of any spoilers, I'm just going to leave this one alone. And this is my character, Heijin. She looks pretty serious right there. <laughs> but it is one of the better drawings from around that time. Uh, God, I used to really struggle with hands. It's a lot, a lot easier now that I've drawn like probably several thousand of them since this drawing. But yeah, I do really like how her face turned out here. I think I did a quick ink wash and then I went in with a dark pencil afterwards. Moving on. I don't know if this has been evident at all in my work on Instagram or actually, I guess lately I've been posting a lot of more, I don't know, inoffensive pretty girl type of content, but I've always really liked drawing stuff like this. Don't really know how to categorize it, but yeah, think of it what you will. Um, so yes, here's like a detailed point of view. I think I have actually improved so much since this because this was definitely at least like six years ago i'm pretty sure maybe five no yeah yeah at least six years definitely got a better grip on drawing faces and etc but i still do like a lot of the decisions that i made in this drawing and it really makes me want to revisit just simple black and white ink here's another one it's kind of wonky but eh, it is what it is Here's a cleaner drawing of my character Kim's. She does look quite a bit older here. I think at that point I was experimenting a lot with what I wanted my art to look like. Still don't really know where to place this, but it was a lot of fun. Um, I was experimenting with some different techniques that I could use with ink. So as you can see, I inked the majority of it with black lines, but I but I used gray lines for the stuff that's under the shirt, which is actually a really cool effect. I want to do that again and i do like the shapes that i ended up using for the body even though they're pretty exaggerated it's pretty pretty interesting for me to look at and i was using this as a profile picture actually up until now for my youtube account just funny because it's so old here's another piece uh featuring two of my characters nano and kim's again i really like this piece I spent a lot of time on it. I know that this one was one of the more... Oh yeah, okay, I'm remembering. The reason why this one took forever, this one actually took quite a bit of time as well, is because I actually used a brush to ink the whole thing, I'm pretty sure. Which is something I haven't done since because... Ooh, that was my glasses. I haven't done that since because Controlling the lines with a brush is very, very hard, and it was just so tedious that I, I wasn't a huge fan of the process, but 
I do think the result is worth it because it gives so much more line variation than just using a nib. So I might want to revisit this. And I really like what happened with the jean texture. It's very, very satisfying to look at. Hmm. Yeah, not a huge fan of the face, but I think overall it still holds up, which is pretty crazy because usually when I look at my older art, it's like, I just want to burn it all. But there have been some good ones over the years. These are my two characters, Sock and Heijin. I do like how this one turned out quite a bit. I think I got the limp feeling of her body down pretty well. I don't know, I don't know what's going on with the background here. It's quite splotchy, but I do like the figures. Here's a little bit of a zoomed-in close-up shot. Yeah, I like her face in this one a lot. I was having so much fun with this. I think I did this drawing in my last year. Was it my last year of Sheridan? I can't remember. I think it might have been. Yeah, I think it was the last year. It would make the most sense because what I was working on my last year for my thesis film was uh, a little trailer for... It Fracture, which was the name of my comic at the time. I think I'm going to change the name to something else now. If I, well, I'm, I'm planning to rewrite it, but it was one of the best times of my life art wise because I didn't really have much going on. And, you know, like when you don't have to worry about making a living or a job or anything else, and the stuff that you have going on at school is directly related to what you love the most, which was. The stars just all aligned at that time and it was i think that's why i tried a lot harder with artwork than i have done before or even since because it just really meant a lot to me and i can really see the difference because these these really do hold up after all these years even though a lot of my drawings that i did after this don't like they they look pretty bad to me now that's interesting. I really want to put myself in that mindset again. <clears throat> Here's another one, same characters. I really like her face in this one. I like where my style was going around this time. I mean, I do think it evolved naturally since, but sometimes I, th I wonder if I should bring it back a little bit, you know? This is ancient. God, I don't remember when I drew this. I wish I would date these things. But, yeah, it's one of the first Ghibli prints that I ever did. Ghibli prints. Um, and here's the original. And I can easily part with it. So, if anybody's interested, you can email me with an offer. <laughs> These are a lot of fun. This was from uh, a character design. Is it a character design? I think it was a character design assignment. where, Or maybe life drawing. I don't know. We had to pick an artist and try to imitate their style for a few drawings. So I picked Ronald Cyril. Definitely one of my favorite artists. Because his work is the literal opposite of anything that I ever do or did. And to me, it was so... It, it's so mysterious because I could never understand how people can draw like that because it seems so fluid and loose and not overworked at all and very spontaneous which is something I loved so I had so much fun with this assignment it was crazy I, I was actually shocked that I was able to reproduce that effect even a little bit but it definitely took a lot of letting go which is not easy for me but yeah, it's, it, I just kind of rolled with whatever decisions and, you know, I didn't have to think about anatomy or appeal. Well, I mean, I did think about appeal because appeal is kind of like a, it can apply to a lot of many things. But in this particular sense, I'm talking about like trying to draw conventionally beautiful faces and stuff like that. So it was, it was a huge relief to actually let go of that and really observe another artist's style and try to figure out what makes it so unique. I especially love how he has a lot of um, splotchy thing, uh, splotchy little parts with the line art um, from the nib or the pen or whatever he was using. So yeah, these are just some more, I think these are from a life drawing session, so I had to do these. 
during class and it was definitely more difficult and i don't think i did much of a sketch for these i just kind of went in with the pencil they're very messy but yeah as you can see very different from the stuff that i usually do and super experimental <laughs> and a lot of fun I, I like this one quite a bit and one more i think this is one of the ones that i had to hand in for an assignment gotta love those cats classic ronald Serald cat so creepy <laughs> right and there's two more pieces that i did for this assignment that i actually have up in little frames i don't usually put up my artwork and i haven't really framed any of it ever except for these two i mean this is not framed i just I bought a bunch of dollar store frames this one is of my my two characters pels and pickle I really, really love how this turned out because it's so different from how I usually draw them. I can't believe how many years ago this was. And it still makes me very happy to look at this. So it was definitely a lot of fun. Super loose. Yeah. And one more. <clears throat> of this fortune teller lady. Definitely a ton of fun. I would, uh, I would recommend any... And you, if, any, if any of you guys ever want to challenge yourself, this is such a great challenge to pick like an artist whose style is the exact opposite of anything that you ever do and then try to try to emulate it. It's, it's so fun. It definitely makes you appreciate things about your work and things that you never, like decisions that you would never normally make. I think I definitely got a lot out of it. So now I'm gonna move on to like a little bit later after I graduated. I think this was the Inktober after I, the year after I graduated from Sheridan. Obviously didn't complete it. Um, I think I just decided to kind of draw a bunch of stuff on the same page, obviously. <laughs> but I really like these drawings. I think it's, it's like a neat thing to do. I would want to do this again. It was a lot of fun. Most of these are my characters with like one random person thrown in there just to fill up the space um and i just wanted to practice drawing like pretty foliage which you know i do like this uh little galaxy scarf for fiona i think it's getting a little dark out there and the camera's having trouble focusing so i'm gonna turn on a light wow and this is super yellow i mean what can you do right i'm 13 minutes in can't stop now <laughs> yeah this is much better yeah so a little galaxy scarf for fiona hey jen with a pumpkin i really like the hair on this one and that's noelle in her school tracksuit and this is one of my older characters whom i'm just not going to talk about because i might want to rewrite that entire thing and this is Sock when he was younger. Focus on this. I love the bleeding effect here. It's actually more pronounced because I think I mixed. I have a thing where, or had a thing. I don't do this so much anymore, but I used to mix a lot of different brand inks, like different type inks. So I think here I, I mixed acrylic ink with like regular. I'm blanking hard on what types of different inks there are, but anyways, I think it made it separate more violently when I put it down on uh, the page, and it created a really cool watercolor-like effect, so definitely gotta try doing that again. And here's my girl, Hey Jen, again, looking very pissed for reasons that I don't remember. <laughs> Some pumpkins, just to try and um experiment with different techniques i like the the outline on the stem man my, my brain's starting to shut down i better hurry <laughs> i really like the seaweed like foliage i did around this uh body right here it's also hadrian i have this thing about her drowning so i, I used to draw her with some sea seaweed in her hair a lot so this is just working off of that motif yeah very tiny like look at this shit you guys man how am i 
How am I not blind yet is the real question, but my eyesight is terrible. I really hope that I can get laser eye surgery. That would make my life a lot easier because this sucks, I gotta be honest. I don't even want to talk about my vision problems. Anyway, here is uh, another one from I think my last year in Sheridan. And this is a rare gouache piece. I believe I've only done... I've only used gouache for fun, like, twice. This time and one other time last year. Which is so unfortunate because, God, I really love this effect. It's so neat and it and the colors can be so bright and, I don't know, it's just the most fun. I love the velvet li velvety texture that this gouache has. This is the Holbein Acrylic Gouache. I got a little set of them because they sold it at the bookstore slash art supply store at Sheridan. And I actually think I might pop into that store again because I haven't really seen these gouache, uh, this brand of gouache sold separately in other art stores. So anyways, I, I do really, oh my God, this looks so haggard. Look at that. <laughs> anyway, if you look at it at proper lighting, I think I did put on a little too many I think this was honestly the issue is this was just too damn small, which is always the issue with my art because it's like as big as my freaking fingernail and I had to go in to paint in all those details and she ended up looking like a burn victim. That's too bad. Anyways, love gouache. Definitely want to use it a lot more. I can't wait to show you guys the other gouache. Hmm duo that I did like last year but moving on what should I do next okay so I'm just gonna go over these couple of pieces where oh, I guess this is just a random one uh pickle is the character not a whole lot to say here moving on this is the Skillshare class live demo thing that I did on camera I was sweating like a pig it was horrible but I did get over actually that was one of my first steps to making me comfortable enough to be able to like record myself and start a youtube channel all the freaking five or seven years after i actually first had the desire to so i mean hey nothing is impossible right that's honestly my biggest takeaway uh that's why i keep harboring the the, the hope that i will someday rewrite my comic which actually this is the main character or one of the main characters of Heijin, my princess. I draw I draw her a lot and haven't actually done it in a little bit. Not since Inktober, but I'm excited to draw her again. Yeah. If you guys want to watch the detailed process of this drawing, check out my Skillshare class. I will link it in the description. <clears throat> okay. So now I'm going to show you the Inktober from 2018. I don't know if it's in the correct order, but hopefully. This lighting kind of sucks. I'm going to turn on the other light and see if it'll make it any better. I guess this should be fine. Glasses. Okay. So this is the first Inktober piece that I posted for 2018. And the whole idea I had that year was to introduce my two new characters, Sweet and Zero. So the backstory behind them is, it's actually kind of funny. I, like anything else, it takes me apparently years to execute on any ideas that I have. So like years ago, maybe like four years, five? Okay, maybe that's exaggerating. Let's say three, three years ago, three or four years ago. I had this idea to make these two characters that are like, models and i wanted to use them as for some reason i couldn't just draw random outfits on random people i needed to make characters for that specific purpose so it's something that i thought about but i never really executed and it was kind of just like brewing at the back of my mind and eventually for 2018 i decided to pull the trigger uh, i did design them before october but i wanted i never like posted pictures of them or anything so I wanted to take the opportunity to introduce them. And this is how I did it. As you can see, I mixed in a little bit of, I think, silver into the ink. So it's a bit shimmery. 
um, but I quite like how it turned out and I think it could have been a little more detailed in the curtains but overall it was a lot of fun and I had so much fun designing the little circus outfits for them. I was thinking of it kind of like a circus themed burlesque show type of situation where they have like a little stage and whatever you get the idea but I also really like the, the little mask that they have and they have a sun and moon motif going on yep okay so these two are a continuation of the kind of like a circus thing going on this is a really really popular piece when i posted it on instagram and it's too bad that i couldn't really show it off like this because as you can see it's very shiny i used a uh, mm, kuritake yeah, Kuritake Gold Mica Ink, which is very nice, by the way. And yeah, I do quite like this design a lot. And there was actually somebody who cosplayed this, and it was amazing. It was actually mind-blowing how somebody sewed the outfit and did such a great job. I'm gonna see if I can find it and like link it in the description or something. Or maybe edit it into the video. I don't know, but yeah. I, I really like her three three furry companions right there. I don't know if they're alive or not. I didn't really think about it too much, but I like drawing. And this is Zero with her jester-like outfit. I love this dress shape. I really want to try making a dress that's in this shape at some point. Uh, I promised myself that after- ooh, look at how shiny this is. I think I used a gel pen for to accent the, the little poofy parts right there but yeah i promised myself that i will buy myself a sewing machine as soon as i fin i wrap up the art book business stuff like as a reward so i'm really looking forward to that and hopefully by that time i'll have some designs that i'm gonna attempt to make so that'll be fun hopefully yeah as you can see this is very tediously inked I do think it was worth it. Very shiny. Yes. Okay, moving on. So these are the introductory portrait drawings that I did for these two characters. Zero and Sweet. And this one was kind of a failure in my eyes. So you're probably not going to see it anywhere because I think I've got rid of, gotten rid of it in most places. And I did not include it in my art book because, I don't know, I just don't like it. I hate how it turned out. <laughs> because here's the problem. I guess I don't really I've drawn a ton of dark skin characters in my in the comic and sometimes digitally over the years but I realized that I've never really drawn any dark dark skin characters with ink and my god it's so difficult to get an even skin tone I feel like gouache would be the medium to do that in well and probably a bunch of others that i've never used like oil or something or like just acrylic paint but yeah opaque paint would be needed for that so her skin looked so splotchy and i was so upset <laughs> and i didn't have time to redo this piece so i just kind of tried my best to fix it so i went in with a gray pencil to try to like cover up all the splotchy parts like that and in the end, it still just looks like she has like three layers of cake foundation on her face and started to crease. So, not a good look and it did not work, but <clears throat> moving on. This one, I actually was really happy with because it was as straightforward as it gets. Just use diluted ink to um, outline and I do believe I used uh, a brush for this actually because it's the face is quite a bit bigger than usual. And yeah, I mean, not a whole lot to say. I really like how it turned out and I was mostly focusing on the shapes in this one. So it's pretty simple, but yes, definitely want to draw stuff like that once in a while. So here's zero again and sweet. So in this one, the idea was that like they're just communicating on the phone about some sort of business over the weekend. So zero was like out and getting shit done, buying fabric, um, you know, cute little, I do like to imagine these things, 
when I draw, <laughs> when I draw these pictures, like I'll think of a tiny little storyline and what stores she went to or something like that. And that that makes it a lot more fun. But yeah, so there she bought a bunch of supplies, and she's a little pissed because clearly, Sweet's not doing her job. Oh yeah, also for this one, I used washi tape to to put a design on her sweater, sweatshirt, hoodie. I don't know. I really like the hoodie design actually. I think I owned one like this, um, like a similar shape when I was in high school or something. And I remember for some reason I decided that I was over it and then I just like donated it to uh, whatever. Like I just donated a bunch of old clothes that I wasn't gonna wear anymore. And then like years later, I realized that this uh, hoodie would have been something that I would definitely wear now. So it's a shame, <laughs> but maybe I'll I'll try to sew something like that. I really like how it, is, it was just open, really low, low cut, like low cut hoodie. When when do you ever see that, right? It's pretty random, but anyways, uh, I was using a washi tape over here as well, as you can see. Super tedious work. Don't really recommend it, but it was all right. Overall, this piece is a little bit boring. I like the sketch better. I think her her face was more expressive in the sketch and it was funnier, but I do like how the hair turned out. It's cute. And I do like this color scheme quite a bit. I think there was something, sh oh yeah, I used like a shiny. Oh, there you go. You can see the, how the cat, uh, on the couch I added some shiny details and like the little nail polish things. It's crazy how all these details totally get lost when you look at the image as a whole, which is why sometimes I do like to pull these out and just kind of look at them because I put so much work in <laughs> at the time. And these are the gouache pieces that I was talking about earlier, which are so, so fun to look at. Just look at how crazy this texture is. And look at how bright they are too. These Holbein acrylic gouache, amazing paint. I really want to get back to it i actually have the footage recorded for these two so i might edit it down and show you guys the process so let me know if you would want to see that i think it'll be fun to go through even though they're so old yeah it's got like this velvety texture and i definitely had so much fun painting these even though it took forever and here's the other one yeah i really love it as you can see i didn't cake it nearly as hard as last time. Last time being like several years ago. <laughs> Definitely got better since then, which is nice. Anyways, I should probably hurry up because it's almost been 30 minutes and I still have quite a bit of stuff to go through. Like last year's Inktober. So yeah, this is another one from the same scene as I showed you before where Zero is still pissed on the phone and <laughs> I like the, the jeans texture. And her cute little boots. I really love drawing shoes, if you guys haven't noticed. That's one of my favorite things to draw. I actually really like drawing hands, too. It's just clothes in general. Details are where it's at. Yep. There's that. I remember people commenting that these two little things look like the bear was like wearing boots or something. So funny, it made me laugh. I didn't realize that at the time, but now I, that's all I can see every time I look at it. <clears throat> this is the... Oh, I guess this... Okay, so these were... I posted these before I did the face reveal. So this was like the last post before the face reveal where you could kind of see like a little bit. Yeah, I was trying to create this whole mysterious thing. Hilariously. But yeah, I, I really like how this piece turned out. It's definitely one of my favorites. And as you can see shiny leggings yeah i had so much fun designing their outfits oh yeah and for this uh drawing i actually inked on i used black undiluted ink so you can kind of see how i feathered it out with the dry brush effect which was really cool i don't really do that and i haven't done that since but it was a lot of fun. It was a first for me to just use ink without any water. I really like the effect that it makes, especially on the super textured watercolor paper. It's pretty cool. I definitely want to do that again. Yeah. 
moving on this is the last inktober i don't think it's the last one i did it might have been i'm not sure but yeah at this point i was like really tired and i could no longer do it as you can see these are super detailed like this definitely took me hours um these took a lot longer compared to 2019 inktober so i'm not surprised that i burned out very quickly and i don't even remember doing anything else at the time either and still i got super burned out so yeah but i really like how this one turned out and i did use gouache for the skin tone because I was so afraid to handle sweet because I really didn't want to have the splotchy, like weird cake creasing effect on her face again because it was so off putting last time. So I just decided to use gouache to keep it on the safe side. So I, I filled in the skin with gouache and then I went over some of the line work. I do really, really like the sh a lot of the shapes in this one. Like I like her torso shape here and the. The long legs, I love the exaggerated long legs. This one was so much fun. And as you can see, the, the little masks are also hanging off the chair. Yeah, I love these girls. I really miss drawing them. I think I'm gonna try to do something with them again soon. As soon as I get a little more time. So this brings us to 2019 Inktober. This is the pile. It's out of order. Wait, actually, I feel like I could put it in order, maybe. I kind of sorted it by like the size of the paper, which was, should have sorted before filming this, but it doesn't matter. So this was the first. I remember the order pretty well, so I think I'll just sort it as I go. <clears throat> Excuse me. <coughs> I'm still a little bit sick. I've been getting over this cough for like a month now. It's just won't leave me alone. It's so annoying. Anyway, so this is the dull eyes drawing. And you guys have seen this one. I made a video on the process. So it was a little close up. And yeah, not a whole lot to say. It's definitely started it with a bang. I did not expect it to get as much attention as it did on Instagram. It, it did very well, which was pretty cool. So yeah, went over the process of this one. And you guys have seen it in detail. So just showing it to you one more time. And... Ooh, the lighting here makes it look pretty interesting. So yellow. Anyways, this is the next one. I do like how this one turned out, even though I think the sketch was better, in my opinion. Pretty straightforward. Kind of rushed th through this one. I didn't have a whole lot of time. Ooh, not yet. <laughs> First, I'll go over these three. So these three are the mini Inktobers that I did. Uh, this one was very popular. And I also like it a lot myself. And you guys have seen the process for this one too. I made a video. And then these two, super cute, pretty quick. And I, I love this little mousy looking face. Uh, yeah, I just had an idea pop into my head and I just rolled with it. Wasn't too happy with this one, but I guess after after some time, it, it definitely looks more attractive to me now, which is interesting. I was pretty underwhelmed by it at the time. <laughs> and I did use a silver pen for the little details. Yeah, and here's a close-up of this. Yep. Okay, now... After this, I decided to change up the color scheme because the whole purple-pink thing was getting pretty old. So I did this piece, which is one of my favorites from the Inktober. I revisited an old little doodle that I did. And yeah, I love how it turned out. Uh, I like her dainty little skinny long legs and very pronounced feet. I like drawing feet. <laughs> um, yeah, I used a orange highlighter with this as well. And I put a little bit of sparkles into her hair. Mm -hmm. And moving on to the next one, I think, oh, I think this is what I did next. So I called this one Maple Crown and all the, most of these are available in print format on my shop. This one was very spontaneous. I didn't know what I was going to draw at all. I just took out the sheet and I just kind of rolled with whatever came to mind. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. It, I, I, I did have to fix some mistakes. So the process was a little 
a little more spontaneous than usual, but I do like how the hands turned out looking and I like how it's a little bit washed out. There's a hand there that I didn't bother drawing because I think it looked just fine without it. And yeah, this one was great. I do kind of regret not recording it, but I think the fact that I was recording it gave me a lot of mental freedom to just kind of really relax because I mean, no matter how used to it, I think I always still like clench to a certain extent when I'm, I know I'm on camera or whatever. Yep, and after that, <clears throat> I did something more illustrative. I wanted to do this little scene, which is also something I revisited from a sketch, uh, one, like a sketch I did while I was riding the subway in my sketchbook. I, I really like how this one turned out. Uh, I do like the glowy effect. Uh, also used a highlighter for that orange. It's very warm. I love this scene and I really like how the The tree turned out as well. I didn't put too much too much uh, pressure on myself And as a result it turned out better than usual. I do like the sketched out the, the washed out parts as well and of course sock ah, Sweet boy Yes And here is actually him again so, as you can tell, this was so tedious doing the, the thing with- uh, I used washi tape. It's like a metallic- I think it was like bronze or something washi tape. So I just uh, lined it up and I cut it all up into tiny little pieces and I did this halo effect, which- You know what? No regrets. I think this is definitely one of my favorite Inktober pieces. It's so cool. I actually would probably want to put this one up on a wall or something because it's so fun to look at yeah really happy with this one conceptually and how it worked out in the execution and then i was shading a lot more with a i used like a brown ballpoint pen for this one and the effect was great i i want to do a bigger piece with more characters using this technique because i'm a fan it was a lot of fun it was definitely one of the more fun pieces to work on here is an extreme close-up for you guys And this camera is great. And wait, is this it? Oh wait, no, there's more. Um. <clears throat> okay. And this one, I don't know if this is in the correct order, but close enough. <laughs> Still sticking to the same theme. And then I really liked putting a border into it. So as you can see, I cut around all the little flowers and stuff. So it was a huge pain, but again, worth. Yeah, I really liked how this one came out, and I think at this point I was kind of zeroing in to the kind of artwork that I can relate. Not even so much relate, but like, if I look at this, I think this represents me more than any of the other stuff. Like, the pink and purple stuff was a lot of fun, but it does feel like it's not really me when I look at it, but this is closer. It's definitely, like, I wouldn't mind with this i think this does represent me a lot better than the other one it's really hard to explain these things because i feel like it's almost impossible for me to escape identifying with my art too much but that's a topic for another day i used a different wash tape for this one it's a really fun black sparkling one and this was one of the most popular <laughs> inktober pieces that i did for 2019 it's heijin the previous one was also heijin um, there's two different versions of her. I don't really want to get into it, but in the regular, like, school attendance version, she has, like, long black hair because she actually bothers to brush it or somebody brushes it for her. Not gonna say anything about the story, but I love this little black bird. I thought it would be nice to give her a little silent companion, so I was thinking of, like, a tiny little black bird. Yes. Moving on. I did one more in the same type of color scheme. This was a more detailed one. It was more spontaneous. Look at how f messed up this face is. <laughs> I mean, it's not that bad, but I did fix it a lot when I went in after scanning. But yeah, this was super spontaneous. This had no sketch, as in like no thumbnail or no planning. I didn't even know what I was going to draw for this. I just kind of sat down and whatever came to mind, I rolled with and... You know what? It was a very interesting experience. I like how it turned out a lot. And I really, really like what's going on here. 
with the little halo effect and like the darker background for Hadrian and I do like this tree a lot I like how it turned out I want to do more stuff like this hopefully I give myself context by rewriting my freaking story one of these days and then I wanted to since I drew the girls so much oh yeah speaking of girls actually I'm gonna go over this one first so this is Noel and I switched up the color scheme for her and I really love how the hair turned out in this one I think it looks so soft and flowy definitely one of my favorites and I tried using like this metallic um, paint I don't know you can't really see it unless I do this obviously which is pretty cool but it's a shame you can't see it in a still image yeah, and I used holographic tape for the border. So just gonna give you guys one more close up. And so, since I gave so much attention to the girls, I wanted to draw the boys as well. So here's Fiona and Sock. And I haven't draw them, drawn them in so long before this. This was honestly one of the happiest like experiences. I really, really missed them. I like how Fiona's face turned out. I, that's exactly how I picture him. Uh, Sock, maybe not quite, but <laughs> it's hard to revisit characters that I haven't drawn in so long. I, I almost feel like I forget how to draw them. And facial expressions are so important to me. So I was adamant in kind of getting it right. And yeah, I was also testing these cool paints by Coliro Colors. I think that's how you pronounce it. Yeah, I'm a big fan. They're super pretty. I really want to find an excuse to use them again. It's just too bad that this kind of stuff you can only see in person, you know? It doesn't translate into, like, prints or anything. But maybe that's the point. It makes the original more special, for sure. I, I also really like the cross-hatching technique I did it here. I did it kind of sparingly, and I think... Well, I guess that depends on your definition of sparingly. But yeah, I really liked how it turned out. And this is the last Inktober piece from 2019. I went all out on this one. And it took a while. It took forever. Oh my god, it took forever to sketch. Ugh, this is the kind of stuff that would have seriously benefited from me doing a digital sketch first. Because my god, like, I couldn't even really balance it. I'm pretty sure I had to cut off the page on one side to make it slightly more balanced from what I can remember, I don't know. But it was the most detailed one, I think. The most convoluted one in terms of detail anyways. and But it was so much fun. It was really fun drawing my characters in these cute little Halloween outfits. And yeah, not a whole lot to say. Just gonna show you guys some details. Love drawing shoes and feet. <laughs> I like this foot, that's actually, these are pretty, pretty good feet. And Fiona in his skeleton jumpsuit thing. Ah, my children. So yeah, there you have it. This awkward, like, stupid spider on his head. I don't know why I even put that there, but I just thought it was so funny. I don't know. I don't know. So yeah, I think that concludes my tour of all the originals like all the finished artwork on loose paper that i have ga gathered over the last few years and i really hope you guys enjoyed watching this i actually had a lot of fun myself probably a lot more fun than looking through my sketchbooks because there's so much like i don't know garbage doodles in there but these are the the things that i'm more proud of i guess and i don't know i just really hope you guys enjoyed watching the sketchbook tour and if you made it this far this one was even longer than my previous sketchbook door this isn't even really a sketchbook door anyways at this point i'm just rambling because i'm brain brain dead after having recorded for so long but um yeah thank you so much for watching and i will see you guys in my next video bye